You know, before I even get into the the meat of this video, allow me to remind those of you who are aware that on tomorrow there is going to be a Million Moms March <clears throat> in Washington. And I plan on doing a private video on what the speakers at this Million, million Moms March should be saying to the mothers, but I'm sure they're not. But I'm going to tell y'all what they should be saying, and I'm going to do that in a private video. Many of you have sent me emails requesting it. If not, send me an email. I'll send the link out to you. But I find it kind of interesting that these women are convening to have this march. And I know what it's going to boil down to. I'm not going to get too much into that right now. I'm going to do all of that in my private video because I got some other fish to fry in this video here. But after the riots in Baltimore, you had a lot of people looking at the economy. And many of those shines were crying about they had no jobs. They talked about the unemployment, the poor schools. Many of these Negroes were complaining about the social conditions that exist there in Baltimore. So this prompted many people to write articles and to look into the economy of Baltimore. And what people have found out is not only just in Baltimore, but we're talking since the Great Society, we're talking some $40 trillion that has been spent on poverty programs, inner cities, you know, attempting to bring these people into the mainstream of American culture. And we can clearly see that those, those policies, those programs have failed. Right there in Baltimore, you have a annual stimulus that was pumped into that community of $1.8 billion. That's $1.8 billion spent right there in Baltimore. And even with that stimulus funding, you still had how you still have rather an unemployment rate for black men 24 to 35 at 37 percent white men of the same age group their unemployment rate is 10 percent now mind you this disparity exists within a city that from top to bottom those who are calling the shots are black. So the Negro can't talk about institutionalized racism, the ongoing legacy of slavery, white supremacy, when you have $1.8 billion has been spent or pumped into that community trying to stimulate that economy, and you have top to bottom Shines, Negroes, Afro-Americans, whatever you want to call them, that represent every step of administration in that city. Start from Congressman Elijah Cumstain, to the mayor, to the city council, to the school board, all the way down to the police chief. And all of these people are Negroes. Yet and still, with 1.8 billion dollars being pumped into Baltimore in terms of stimulus to try to stimulate the economy, get these shines, jobs, create opportunities, you still have an unemployment rate for black men, 24 to 35, at 37%. Their male, white male counterparts, unemployment rate, 10%. How do you explain this? When you look at education, not only do you have 
billion dollars pumped into the economy in terms of stimulus money, but you also have 1.2 billion pumped into their educational system annually to try to create programs, hire teachers, hire tutors, get materials to help these students so that they can be equipped to graduate high school. Even with 1.2 billion dollars pumped annually into Baltimore, you have a graduation rate that sits around 61%. Well, it was 61% in 2010. It went up to 68%. And the Negroes applauded it. They're so happy. They're so happy that they have a, a, a graduation rate at 68%. I mean, this is, this is mind-boggling that you find these shines applauding this shit. You applaud a graduation rate at 68%, which is basically still failing. If you're going to put it on a, a letter grade scale, that's a high D. I mean, you're still flunking. I mean, it's still not good. I mean, what parent would be satisfied with their child coming home with a report card full of grades teetering around 61 and 68%? It's a failure. But yet and still, this is what you have there in Baltimore, even though you have $1.2 billion that's pumped into their educational system annually. How do you explain this? With a host of black churches, a host of black pastors, a host of black civic organizations. You got all these Negroes who say they love black folks so much. You got a black mayor. You got a black administration. How do you explain this? How can this be explained? How can this outright failure be explained when you look at these shines and try to make heads or tails of this failure? Because you now can't sit back and say it's racist because you have the money that's being pumped there. And I know what you Negroes are going to say because I know y'all. What you Negroes are going to say is you Negroes are going to immediately say, well, wait a minute. You can... Tweak numbers to say whatever you want them to say. You can take stats and make them tweak them to support whatever narrative you're trying to push. This is what y'all going to say. Well, if that's your argument, then the people there in Baltimore are dumber than what I thought. Because these stats come from their own website. So if they're going to tweak numbers, you would think they would tweak them on the positive end, not the negative. Because that makes them look bad. So if your argument is you can tweak numbers to make them say whatever you want them to say, then you would think that they would put that graduation rate, they would tweak it, play with it, and get it above at least 75%. No, they put it at where it is, 68%, even though you have $1.2 billion being pumped into that educational system annually, and you have a school board full of Democrats, full of Negro Democrats. How do you explain this? I'm going to tell you how you explain this. And I'm going I'm to intru introduce y'all to two individuals who I believe might have the answer. Now, I'm not saying this is the answer. I'm going to throw it out there and see what y'all think. And the first person that I'm going to reference, and I'm going to put their names in the description box so you can go do the research for yourself. You ain't got to take my words on nothing that I'm telling you. But James Henry Hammond, who coined the phrase mud seal. And I don't know if you're familiar with the mud seal theory. Go look it up. I'm going to reference it here. You can go do your own research and you can see that what I'm telling you is true. The mud seal theory centers upon the position that you have to have a class in society. An ignorant, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing this, but this is basically the premise of the argument, is that you have to have a class of ignorant Negroes. Well, not necessarily Negroes, but ignorant individuals who occupy the lowest rung of society. And this is where you have your upper echelon society rest upon them. It basically comes from the fact that the lowest threshold of a building is the mud seal. And everything is built upon this mud seal. And this, who coined this phrase was James Henry, Henry Hammond. And he was talking about you have this class of society. You don't have to educate them. You don't have to spend money on them. You don't have to try to bring them into the mainstream of American culture. You don't have to select them. Nature has selected them to be the mud seal. There's nothing that you can do about it. 
There's absolutely nothing that you can do to fix what nature has selected. This is what James Henry Hammond argued. And it just so happens that the group that he was referring to was Negroes who occupied this mud seal. Now, if you were to take James Henry Hammond and you asked him, well, Mr. Hammond, how do you explain 1.8, what else? First, how do you explain $40 trillion being spent since the Great Society to try to help bring into mainstream culture individuals who are impoverished, low education, low job skills. How, how do you explain that failure? And then how do you explain the failure there in Baltimore with $1.8 billion being spent in Baltimore, Baltimore, yet you still have unemployment rates teetering around, you know, for black males 24 to 20, 35, 37%. And for Baltimore, period, their unemployment rate is three points higher than the national average. How do you explain this, Mr. James Henry Hammond? You know what he would say? <laughs> he would tell you that you're wasting your time. You're wasting money. You're throwing money at individuals that nature has selected. Nature selected them to be the mud seal. There's nothing that you can do about this. You can spend as much money as you want to. You're throwing it away because you cannot educate them. You cannot bring them into the mainstream American culture. No matter what programs you try to create, no matter how much money you spend, it is a waste of time because they have been selected by nature to be the mud seal. Now, that's what Mr. James Henry Hammond would argue as to this failure of not only these 40 trillion that has been spent on poverty since the Great Society, but also the 1.8 billion that's been spent right there in Baltimore. And as I said, you still got an unemployment rate for black men 24, 35, 37%. And you still got an unemployment rate in Baltimore alone that's three points higher than the national average. Mr. Hammond would suggest the reason why that is is because you're trying to educate or you're trying to help the mud seal and you can't help them and the reason why you can't help them is because nature has selected them for that position the other individual that i would like to reference is a george fitzhugh and again like i said i'm gonna leave their names in the description box you can go look them up for yourself now george fitzhugh would argue in what he argued in two of his classics cannibals all and sociology for the south Two of his major writings. And what George Fitzhugh argued was that the Negro is an adult child. Even though chronologically he may be grown and be considered an adult, mentally he's a child. And all you have to do really is just look at social media and see that he, he, he has a point. I mean, it's not too far-fetched when you look at this Negro in 2015. But what Mr. Fitzhugh argued in his sociology for the South and Cannibals All was that since this Negro is an adult child, he needs the social trappings and protections of slavery, the economic protection and the social protections of slavery. It would benefit him to be enslaved. It's better for him when he's enslaved. This is what George Fitzhugh argued. And when you take these two arguments of George Fitzhugh, and James Henry Hammond, and you look at their argument from top to bottom, and you apply it to the Great Society programs and the $40 trillion that's been spent trying to help these Negroes, and you look at Baltimore and the $1.8 billion that's spent in stimulus, yet and still you have poverty, you have crime, you have unemployment, even with a stimulus of $1.8 billion. You look at their education, $1.2 billion spent annually on education, yet and still their graduation rate teeters around 68%. And this is all done, mind you, in a city where top to bottom, you have nothing but shines. From the Elijah Comstain to the mayor, to the city council, to these buffoonish ass black pastors. Top to bottom, it's all black. How do you explain this? Well, Mr. Hammond would suggest that the reason why you see such failure, even with all of this money, 
is that the group of people that you're trying to help, nature has selected them as the mud seal. And you can't help them. You can't do nothing with them. No matter, no matter how much money you try to spend on programs, it's not going to work. It is a waste of time. You're putting a Band-Aid on cancer. This is what James Henry Andy would argue. On the other hand, George Fitzhugh will come behind that and say, well, wait a minute. You're wasting your time because these Negroes are adult children who really would be better served if they were in slavery. Now, I know what a lot of you Negroes are going to say. <laughs> a lot of you shines are going to say, I cannot believe that this brother has made a video and he's suggesting that Two individuals has the solution for the Negro who clearly hate black people. They're going to say James Henry Hammond is a racist. George Hitsu is a bigot. They're going to say that they hate black people. And it's clear that they hate black people by the things that they have written and the philosophies that they espouse. James Henry Hammond, when he talks about the mud seal, and equates that to Negroes and slavery, that is racist. That's what they're going to say. Then on the other hand, the Shines are going to say, wait a minute, George Fitzhugh talked about the Negro would be better served in slavery. How can you cite these guys? How can you side with these guys? I cannot believe that a black man would promote these positions. Then these Negroes are going to say, you a coon. See, this is proof that you a coon. Because you side with these guys and you side with them and you support them. Well, that's the reason why I'm going to leave their name in the description box. And I challenge you to go look them up for yourself. Because when you go look them up for the, yourself, you're going to see that there is no way on God's green earth that I could possibly side with Congressman James Henry Hammond or George Fitzhugh simply because of the fact that both of them are Democrats. <laughs> At the end of the day, Negro. 